This conference will now be recorded. All right, it's seven o'clock on Thursday, February 18th, 2021. Welcome to the City of Muscatine City Council meeting. Cinda, will you please do the roll call? Council Member Hopkins? Present. Council Member Freilich? Present. Council Member Malcolm? Present. Council Member Jordan? Present. <clears throat> Council Member Brockert? Present. Council Member Gingrich? Present. Council Member Brackett? Present. Seven present, zero absent, Your Honor. Thank you. Will you please join me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance? <laughs> I pledge allegiance, I pledge allegiance to, the flag to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America. and, and, to, the and to the Republic for which it stands, and one nation, one nation under, God, under God, indivisible, indivisible with, liberty, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. And thanks for joining us tonight. We're going to continue on with our agenda. We're on number five. The following items are considered to be routine by the city council and will be enacted with one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a council member so requests. In which event, it will be removed from the consent agenda and considered in the normal sequence on the agenda. Do I have a motion? to approve the consent agenda, which includes items 6A through H, items 8A through F, items 9A and B, items 12A and B, and tonight's bills totaling $5,119,991.72. And we have a motion by Councilwoman Gordon with a second by Councilman Hopkins. Councilman Brackett, how do you vote? Aye. Councilman Malcolm? Aye. Councilwoman Brockert? Aye. Councilwoman Gordon? Aye. Councilman Gindrich? Aye. Councilman Fralick? Aye. And Councilman Hopkins? Aye. The consent agenda is approved and we will continue on down we have five public hearings tonight. The first public hearing is on the proposed development agreement with Grandview Senior Lofts. Now is the time for the public comment. Hearing nothing, do I have a motion to close? So moved, Your Honor, Second. Brock. Second. 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 We have a motion by Councilman Brocker with a second by Councilman Gindrich. Councilman Hopkins, do you agree? Aye. Councilman Fraley. Aye. Councilman Gindrich. Aye. Councilwoman Gordon. Aye. Councilwoman Brocker. Aye. Councilman Malcolm. Aye. And Councilman Brackett. Aye. In case anyone's wondering why I'm not doing a voice vote, uh, according to the rules, theoretically, since we're doing a virtual meeting, it's it's uh, more recommended to do a roll call vote on every item instead of a voice vote for clarity's sake. So number B, our second public hearing is on the proposed development agreement with Colorado Senior Lofts. Now is the time for the public to comment. Hearing none, do I have a motion to close? So moved. We have a motion by Councilman Gindrich with a second by Councilman Pockert. Councilman Hopkins, do you agree? I agree. Councilman Freilich? Aye. Councilman Gindrich? Aye. Councilman Gordon? Aye. Councilman Brockert? Aye. Councilman Malcolm? Aye. Councilman Brackett. Aye. Motion carries. 
Then we'll move to our third public hearing, which is on the proposed development agreement with JNB Family One LP and the Ailes Foundation. Now is the time for the public to comment. I would like Hello, to Mayor? request. Yes, that please the, continue. Okay, I would like to request that this be tabled since I have just learned about this. I represent the um, board that for my neighborhood and none of us knew about this happening. So we would like the topic to be tabled until we can gather information and have a clear understanding of what the plan is. Ma'am, could you please say your name and address? Uh, yes, it's Jean Johnson at 3212 Anastasia Place, Muscatine. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Yes. Please, please say your name and address. Hi, this is Mike Maxwell. I live at 3216 Anastasia Place. Please continue. Uh, we just recently moved back to uh, Muscatine after five years in Madison, Wisconsin, into the uh, River Bend Estates area. And uh, I think Jeannie, who just uh, who you just spoke to, mentioned that we didn't know really know much about this plan, uh, and would really like to see it tabled until we can get together here and uh, and kind of figure out what's going on a little better. Just to be clear, uh, Mrs. Johnson and Mr. Maxwell, is your concern just that you haven't had an opportunity to explore what this is all about, not so much that you are in disagreement with it? Well, I would say for me, it's a little of both. We moved from uh, an area, uh, moved into a brand new house in Madison five years ago. Uh, within two years, a uh, 94-unit low-income housing addition was put in a couple blocks away, and the last three years we lived there, uh, the crime rate skyrocketed with shootings and uh, break-ins and car thefts, and we actually moved back to Muscatine <laughs> to get away from all that. So I'm a little concerned. Thank you, Mr. Maxwell. Thank you. Is there and anyone for me, else? And for okay. me, this is this is Jeannie Johnson speaking. Um, yes. You know, I, I know nothing about what the plan is. I know nothing as to how it will impact my living arrangements, how it will, how it will affect traffic, any of those, you know, day-to-day -day concerns that moving 42 new residents in could cause. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Council, any questions or comments? Your Honor, Your Honor. Yes, please Perlow. go ahead. Yes, um, I have received several calls from the, the citizens that live on Anastasia Place, which is directly across from where this steamboat, uh, steamboat way development is going to be. And their concerns were is there's a lot of wording on this that really didn't indicate the position or the, where this development was. And that is part of their concern. Uh, if you look at the how public uh, hearing C is listed, is J and, and B family, LP and Ailes Foundation. And then that really doesn't stipulate where the location is. So they're, they're having a little bit of an issue with location and uh, with not having had, uh, because of the internet problems, they haven't all been able to uh, get on and understand what this development is about. So that's the comments I've received. Okay. Well, so basically the, the, the announcements that we were making that we were gonna be working on this and talking about it, they, they didn't believe that they got noticed because they didn't understand what the location was gonna be. Correct, that's part of it. And they just didn't, um, a lot of people did not get the information simply because we're on the internet rather than you know, on uh, regular council chambers. Mayor, council, uh, this, this is Andrew. Um, I think an important fa fact to point out with this is 
in turn from the land use perspective, uh, a part of the that we're talking about here, they've been a part of the original development plan for the Riverbend Estates that was approved in 2001. So since that's all, since apartments on essentially, essentially an extension of Steamboat Lane has been approved since 2001, unlike the other two projects, there wasn't as many public processes that it went through. So there was less opportunity for the public to be informed, you're saying? Well, there, there was public processes, but in, in 2001, when the entire Riverbend Estates was started, this is in the S3 zoning district, there was a master development plan that was reviewed by P&Z and Council, and um, addition, they, these additional apartment units on an extension of Steamboat have been part of the approved plan all along, so. Oh. Go ahead, Nadine, were you gonna say something? Um. I was going to ask if should we table this would would uh, Chris be able to go and meet with the neighbors and show them what it is he's planning or you know just to get everybody on the same page so that they know exactly what's being proposed. That's what we would like is for this to be tabled so that we could set up some meetings and have discussions. Does that work for Chris? Chris, are you muted? I can't hear you. We're having difficulty hearing you, Chris. He's got a thumbs he says up. Yes. He says yes. Your Honor, then I move that we table this motion until uh, the citizens of Anastasia Place have an opportunity to meet with Mr. Ailes. Citizens of Anastasia Place have an opportunity to meet with Mr. Ailes. Carol, would we actually be tabling the public hearing, though? That doesn't make no. sense. No, when no. you get to the resolution to approve the development agreement, you can table that to the next okay. meeting. Um, so, so I think what you're doing now is holding the public hearing and then we exactly. get to that. Yep. That's right, the way then. I understood it as well. Okay. All right, I withdraw my motion to table. Is there any other comments? Hearing none, I will take a motion to close. So moved, Robert. Second. Second, Gordon. We have a motion by Councilman Brocker with a second by Councilman Gordon. I don't know whose phone that is. But can you tell anyone? Caller nine. Can you tell anyone? Councilman Hopkins, do you agree to close this public hearing? Aye. Councilman Freilich? Aye. Councilman Gindrich? Aye. Councilman Gordon? Aye. Councilman Brockert? Aye. Councilman Malcolm? Aye. Councilman Brackett? Aye. This public hearing is closed and we will continue with the fourth public hearing. Thank you. Which is the city of Muscatine. You're very welcome. And thank you for coming tonight and talking to us. This is the this is uh, how the council is informed of what the public really thinks. And this is your opportunity to, to share that. We appreciate your input and feedback tonight. Okay, the city thank of you Muscat very much. You're very welcome. The city of Muscatine Public Works Department with the assistance of Stanley Consultants have completed the plans and specifications for phase five of the WHSSSP prior to Approving the plans and specifications and soliciting bids, a public hearing is required. 
and I didn't write down W H S S S S P. Can someone please say that for us? What that? Terrestrial sanitary sewer separation project. Thank you. Now is the time for the public to comment. Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to close this public hearing. So moved, Your Honor. Fraley. So moved. We have a motion by Councilman Fralick with a second by Councilman Hopkins. Councilman Brackett. Do you agree to close this public hearing? Aye. Councilman Malcolm. Aye. Councilwoman Brockert. Aye. Councilwoman Gordon. Aye. Gen Councilman Gendrich. Aye. Councilman Fralick. Aye. Councilman Hopkins. Aye. Thank you. This public hearing is now closed and we'll move to our final public hearing on the declaration of, of real estate owned by the city of surplus. City of Muscatine has accumulated a number of excess parcels of land for which the continued public ownership no longer serves any useful purpose. In order to dispose of these parcels to facilitate their returns to useful purpose, a public hearing is required before the City Council may act on the request. Now's the time for the public to comment. Hearing nothing. I have a motion to close this public hearing. So moved, Gordon. Second, please. Second, really? Brocker. We have a motion by Councilwoman Gordon with a second by Councilwoman Brocker. Is there any discussion? Councilman Hopkins, do you agree to close this public hearing? Aye. Councilman Fraley. Aye. Councilman Gendrich. Aye. Councilman Gordon. Aye. Councilman Brocker. Aye. Councilman Malcolm. Aye. Councilman Brackett. Aye. This public hearing is closed and we'll continue on down with the agenda. Next, we have a proclamation on Alexander Clark Day. Whereas Alexander G. Clark's birthday was established as Alexander Clark Day in perpetuity by unanimous vote of the Muscatine City Council in 2018. And whereas the city of Muscatine then pledged that after long obscurity and 60 years of on and off observance, our renowned residents should be honored and remembered by his hometown perpetually. And whereas the year 2021 is the 130th anniversary of Clark's death while he was serving in Liberia as Minister, Resident, and Consul General of the United States. And whereas the Muscatine Community School District recently dedicated the renamed Susan Clark Junior High School in recognition of the Clark family's role in winning equal rights for all public school students. And whereas the 2021 Alexander Clark Lecture at Muscatine Community College titled Josiah Bushnell Grinnell and the Underground Railroad will be delivered by historian and author David Conan on February 25th, Clark's 195th birthday. Now, therefore, I, Diana L. Broderson, Mayor of the City of Muscatine, Iowa, do hereby proclaim Thursday, February 25th, 2021 to be observed as Alexander Clark Day. Thank you to all who helped bring that to our attention. And Mr. Dan Clark, are you here with us tonight? I am. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Could you would you like to say a few words about Alexander Clark Day this year? Well, I would say thank you, Mayor, for doing the proclamation for us. I was chairing the Historic Preservation Commission a decade ago when uh, the city agreed to pursue the idea of making the Alexander Clark House a National Historic Landmark. We have not accomplished that yet, but in the process, the State Historical Society recommended a constitutional historian, Paul Finkelman. We heard from him recently when he wrote a letter to the school board recommending the name change there. And I simply wanted, wanted to quote two sentences from Dr. Finkelman's letter 
in uh, 2019. He said, Alexander Clark is the greatest African American in American history who almost no one has ever heard of. Iowa and Muscatine should brag about him. We have been bragging. We've been doing a pretty good job. In, uh, in 2011, I, I went back today and looked at the proclamation, uh, much more elaborate proclamation, uh, uh, Alexander Clark Week, proclaimed by Mayor Dick O'Brien that year. And then in, in 2012, the Muscatine Community College started hosting the annual Alexander Clark Lecture Series, and we've had a, a number of great programs. Uh, we, that proposal for a National Historic Landmark got bogged down in federal red tape, which I won't go into other than to say it turns out that the federal government considers the Clark House of state historical significance, but not yet national. And so we had lots of discussions with the National Park Service how we would achieve national significance and then other hoops they wanted us to jump. But one of those was recognition as a national network to freedom underground railroad site. That one is more achievable and we may get that one done yet. Uh, the, the lecture this next Thursday by David Kahn and about Josiah Grinnell, for whom the city of Grinnell, Iowa is named, um, and Muscatine had a number of connections with that college. It was it started as the Iowa College in Davenport. The Congregational Minister from Muscatine, who was a close friend of Alexander Clark, was the president of the board of that college. And, and so these connections go on and on. And um, it will be good to have a lecture again about the Underground Railroad in Iowa and Muscatine's part in that. Uh, so I, I thank you again for helping us brag about Alexander Clark. and. Uh, uh, thanks to Oz Malcolm's resolution a couple of years ago, we bring this every February. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Clark. I appreciate you coming on tonight, and I look forward to uh, listening to the lecture next week. And anyone can find information uh, about how to log on to that. Where, Mr. Clark? Uh, I'm not prepared to give you an address, but. I know that on Facebook and I think on the Muscatine Community College website, either one, you, it's a it's a virtual like this council meeting. It's a Zoom meeting, and I'm not sure if it's on YouTube at the same time or something, but um, it's an online deal and you can find it. It was my understanding you could find it on the Muscatine Community College uh, Facebook page, the the log on information, and that's where I plan on going. But it's already I think I already got a link on my calendar for it, so. Thank you so much for coming tonight and bringing this to our attention. We will continue on. We are going to move, we're on 11A. We have staff proposes the adoption of an ordinance amending Title VI Chapter 3, Section 13 of the Muscatine City Code related to disorderly conduct. The intent of the proposed change is to align the city code with the state code relating to the crime of disorderly conduct. The change will also enhance the city's ability to address persons violating the disorderly conduct code. Is there a motion to approve the first reading of this ordinance as submitted? So moved, Your Honor. Councilman Brackett. Second, second Fralick. We have a motion by Councilman Brackett with a second by Councilman Fralick. Is there any discussion? Uh, Hearing none. Mayor, I could, oh, yes, please go I'd ahead, like John. To, I don't uh, have any any controversial. Just to uh, compliment the Chief Talkington for taking some time to uh, personally visit with me about this ordinance, and uh, I appreciate all his hard work with it. Yes, and I, th I think the, uh, the, the diligence that, that staff has been putting into tidying up our city code and making sure that it's uh, easily understandable, um, easy for, for us to follow, easy for the public to follow, so that we can all stay on the same page. It, it, it's a win-win for everyone, and we appreciate their efforts. Councilman Hopkins, how do you vote? Hi. Councilman Fralick. Aye. Councilman Gendrich. Aye. Councilman Gordon. Aye. 
Councilman Brockert. Aye. Councilman Malcolm. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Aye. Councilman Brackett. Aye. Motion carries at, with all votes, with seven. We will move on to 11B. We have an ordinance establishing a TIF district for the Colorado Lofts Project and the Steamboat Apartment Development. This is the third reading. At the February 4th, 2021 meeting, City Council approved the first reading of the ordinance establishing TIF districts for the Colorado Senior Lofts Project and the Steamboat, develop, or Steamboat Apartment Projects. The Grandview Lost Project is already an existing TIF district. The second reading of this ordinance was approved at the February 11th, 2021 in-depth meeting. For City Council consideration is a request to adopt the ordinance on third and final reading to create the TIF district for the Colorado Lofts and Steamboat Apartments projects. Is there a motion to adopt this ordinance on third and final reading and to direct for its publication as required by law? So move, Gordon. Second, please. Second, Brockert. We have a motion by Councilwoman Brockert or <laughs> Gordon with a second by Councilwoman Brockert. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Councilman Hopkins, how do you vote? Aye. Councilman Fralick? Aye. Councilman Gingrich? Aye. Councilman Gordon? Aye. Councilman Brockert? Aye. Councilman Malcolm? Aye. Councilman Brackett? Aye. The ordinance is adopted with all ayes. And we will move to 11C, the next three resolutions are concerning these TIF districts. C, 11C is a resolution approving the development agreement with Grandview Senior Lofts, authorizing the annual appropriation tax increment payments and pledging certain tax increment revenues to the payment of the agreement. This agreement provides for tax increment financing assistance to construct 51 units of senior housing on Grandview Avenue. Is there a motion to adopt the resolution as submitted? So moved, Hopkins. So moved. We have a motion by Councilman Hopkins with a second by Councilman Parker. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Councilman Brackett, how do you vote? Aye. Councilman Malcolm. Aye. Councilman Brockert. Aye. Councilman Gordon. Aye. Councilman Gendrich. Aye. Aye. Councilman Fralick. Aye. And Councilman Hopkins. Aye. The resolution is adopted with all ayes and we will move to 11D. This resolution approves the development agreement with Colorado Senior Lofts authorizing annual appropriation tax increment payments and pledging certain tax increment revenues to the payment of the agreement. This agreement provides for TIF assistance to construct 51 units of senior housing on Colorado Street. Is there a motion to adopt the resolution as submitted? I'll move Gordon. Second. Second Malcolm. We have a motion by Councilman Gordon with a second by Councilman Malcolm. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Councilman Hopkins, how do you vote? Aye. Councilman Fralick? Aye. Councilman Gendrich? Aye. Councilman Gordon? Aye. Councilman Brockert? Aye. Councilman Malcolm? Aye. Councilman Brackett? Aye. The resolution is adopted with all ayes and we'll move to 11E. We have a resolution approving the development agreement with JNP Family One LP and Ailes Foundation, authorizing annual appropriation tax increment payments and pledging certain tax increment revenues to the payment of the agreement. This agreement provides for TIF assistance to construct 42 units of rental housing units on Steamboat Way for low and moderate income individuals and families. Do I have a motion to adopt the resolution as submitted? So 
Don't move, Gordon. Don't move, Hopkins. And then somebody can ask to have it tabled during the discussion. So moved, Your Honor. I move to table this motion until uh, the uh, people of Anastasia Way have an opportunity to talk to Mr. Ailes. Carol, do you want a do you want a vote on the resolution as submitted and then the table, or do you just want the table? You can just table it. Okay. I'll yeah. second so, that. Okay. So we, we'll we'll scratch their original. And I we'll believe you need. To, I'm sorry. I think you need to vote on the table motion. Yes, we, we will. Mm -hmm. We will do that. We have a motion by Councilman Fralick with a second by Councilman Brackett. Thank you, Carol. Is there any further discussion? Uh, yes, yeah, I just I wanted to verify because I couldn't I couldn't quite tell um, with audio issues if Chris was if, if Chris was saying that that works for him. I, I, I apologize for missing that, but I, I wasn't hearing it very well. He gave a thumbs up. I think his audio was giving him a problem, so he gave a thumbs up that he was in agreement. <laughs> okay. All right. I, I, that's, I just wanted to verify that because I wasn't 100% sure that, that that worked. And I also wanted to make sure there wasn't any uh, timing issues because of what this, you know, with the, with the uh, setting up the TIF for that. So um, as long as, as long as that's going to work and with, uh, you know, then I'm fine with tabling it. Chris, are you able to speak yet? Can't hear you, Chris. Yeah, we're, we're, we're not able to hear you for some reason, Chris. Uh, you could type in the chat, though. That's true. <laughs> it's okay. I'm I'm there with you on technology, Chris. I understand. But you did give us a thumbs up, and you're good with talking. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. I just wanted to verify that. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So we, we will table this, um, and we will not put a table two date. Are we okay to not put a table two date, Carol? You can just table it to a future meeting. All right, we'll do that. Some situations, I think you have to list the date, but let's do that. We'll table this to a future date. Councilman Hopkins, are you in agreement with that? Hi. Councilman Fralick. Hi. Councilman Gindrich. Hi. Councilman Gordon. Hi. Councilman Brockert. Hi. Councilman Malcolm. Hi. And Councilman Brackett. Aye. Your Honor. Motion carries, and this is tabled to a future date. Yes, Councilman Fralick. I would suggest that Mr. Ailes gets a hold of Ms. Johnson, as because she is on the board for Anesthesia Place, um, so that they can set up their dates to get together. He's giving me thumbs up. Thumbs up. up. Oh, All right. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next we have a resolution to set a public hearing. At the June 11th, 2020 in-depth City Council reviewed a request to amend the development agreement with Hershey Property and Bush Development to increase the amount of the tax increment rebate from a maximum of $500,000 to an amount not to exceed $700,000. At that meeting, the Muscatine City Council gave consensus approval of this request. The increase in the maximum amount in the development agreement was included in the urban renewal plan amendment approved by city council on February 4 of this year. With this amended amount in the urban renewal plan, the city can proceed with the required public hearing and consideration of approval of the amended agreement. Is there a motion to adopt this resolution as submitted and set a public hearing for March 4th of 2021 at 7 p.m.? So moved, Your Honor, Councilman Brackett. So we have a motion by Councilman Brackett with a second by Councilman Gindrich. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Councilman Hopkins, how do you vote? Aye. Councilman Fraley. Aye. Councilman Gindrich. Aye. Councilman Gordon. Aye. Councilman Brocker. Aye. Councilman Malcolm. Aye. And Councilman Brackett. Aye. Resolution is adopted with all ayes.
And I was reminded that I neglected to ask for public comments at the beginning of the meeting. So I will do that at the end of the meeting. So if anybody has anything they'd like to talk to council about something that's not on tonight's agenda, please type it in the chat or just wait to talk at the end of the meeting. And thank you. We're on 11G. The City of Muscatine Public Works Department, with the assistance of Stanley Consultants, have completed the plans and specifications for Phase 5 of the West Hill Sewer and Storm Separation Project. The cost for this project is estimated to be between $7,800,000 and $8,000,000. The funds are available to complete this project from local option sales tax and water pollution control plant West Hill Sewer Separation Long-Term Financing Plan Reserve. Muscatine Power and Water will reimburse, re, will reimburse a portion of this project for water main work in the area. The bidding documents are now ready to be released to solicit bids and need approved. The bids are due on March 9th of 2021 at 2 p.m. Do I have a motion to adopt the resolution as submitted? So moved, Your Honor Fralick. Second, second, please. Second. Malcolm. Who said second? I did, and uh, uh, Councilwoman Gordon. We have a motion by Councilman Fralick with a second by Councilman Malcolm. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Councilman Hopkins, how do you vote? Aye. Councilman Fralick. Aye. Councilman Gendrich. Aye. Councilman Gordon. Aye. Councilman Brocker. Aye. Councilman Malcolm. Aye. Councilman Brackett. Aye. The resolution is adopted with all ayes, and we're on 11H. The city of Muscatine has accumulated numerous excess parcels of land not required for the discharge of public responsibilities for which continued public ownership no longer serves any useful purpose. In order to return these par parcels to a useful purpose, the city needs to declare them as surplus property. Is there a motion to adopt the resolution as submitted? So moved, Hopkins. Second, please. Second. We have a motion by Councilman Hopkins with a second by Councilman Gindrich. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Councilman Brackett, how do you vote? Aye. Councilman Malcolm. Aye. Councilman Brocker. Aye. Councilman Gordon. Aye. Councilman Gindrich. Aye. Councilman Fralick. Aye. Councilman Hopkins. Aye. The resolution is adopted with all ayes, and we are on 11 I. City, city staff has negotiated a purchase agreement with Grain Processing Corporation regarding the sale of the surplus city-owned parcel at 905 Oregon Street. The purchase agreement and purchase price of $14,100 is equal to the assessed land value. In a previous action, City Council declared this property as surplus, and it is now necessary for Council to adopt a resolution authorizing the sale of this parcel and executing the deed. Is there a motion to adopt this resolution as submitted? So moved, Brockert. Second, second. Brackett. We have a motion by Councilman Brockert with a second by Councilman Brackett. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Councilman Hopkins, how do you vote? Aye. Councilman Fralick. Aye. Councilman Gindrich. Aye. Councilwoman Gordon. Aye. Councilwoman Brockert. Aye. Councilman Malcolm. Aye. Councilman Brackett. Aye. The resolution is adopted with all ayes, and we're on 11J. The City Council has previously declared this property a surplus and directed staff to actively pursue its disposal. Community Foundation of Greater Muscatine has requested the donation of the property between Bond and Franklin Streets for developing a workforce housing unit through the Homes for Iowa program. 
Do I have a motion to adopt the resolution as submitted? So moved, so moved Brockert. We have a motion by Councilwoman Brockert with a second by Councilwoman Gordon. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Councilman Hopkins, how do you vote? Hi. Councilman Freilich. Hi. Councilman Gindrich. Hi. Councilman Gordon. Aye. Councilwoman Brockert. Aye. Councilman Malcolm. Aye. And Councilman Brackett. Aye. The resolution is adopted with all ayes. And we are on 11K. This resolution authorizes the release of a lien placed on the property at 212 Grover Street as the result of a community development block grant funded rehabilitation project. Participation in the program required a lien on assisted properties for the five year compliance period. Property owner has now met all program requirements and has requested the lien be released at this time. Is there a motion to adopt the resolution as submitted? So moved, Your Honor. So moved, Hopkins. We have a motion by Councilman Freilich with a second by Councilman Hopkins. Is there any discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, Councilman Brackett, how do you vote? Aye. Councilman Malcolm. Aye. Councilman Brockert. Aye. Councilman Gordon. Aye. Councilman Gindrich. Aye. Councilman Freilich. Aye. And Councilman Hopkins. Aye. The resolution is adopted with all ayes. And we will move to 11L. Presented for City Council's consideration is a resolution authorizing the assessment of unpaid nuisance abasement costs to private properties. The nuisance abatement costs total $20,199.59. The administrative fees are $1,500 and the assessment fees are $2,200. The total fees being requested for assessment at this time total $23,899.59. Is there a motion to adopt the resolution as submitted? So moved, so moved. Second, Gordon. We have a motion by Councilman Hopkins with a second by Councilman Gordon. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Councilman Brackett, how do you vote? Aye. Councilman Malcolm. Aye. Councilman Brockert. Aye. Councilman Gordon. Aye. Councilman Gindrich. Aye. Councilman Freilich. Aye. And Councilman Hopkins. Aye. The resolution is adopted with all ayes and we will move to 11M. We have a resolution to set a public hearing. All cities in Iowa are required by the state of Iowa to pass a resolution establishing their maximum property tax dollars for certain levies prior to adoption and certification of the final budget. City Council recently completed their review of the proposed city budget for the upcoming year. The proposed total property tax levy rate for the 2021-2022 budget is $15.67209 per $1,000 of valuation, which is the same total tax rate as the last nine years with the 4.86% increase in taxable valuations Total property tax revenue for the city will increase by $677,000, $677,005, which is a 4.76% increase in property tax dollars. Per Iowa State requirements, the notice of public hearing for the first public hearing on the budget only includes the general, transit, tort, liability insurance, emergency, and employee benefits levies. The tax dollars from those levies total $12,597,193 compared to $11,991,593 for those levies for the current fiscal year 2020-2021 budget. This is a $605,600 or a 5.05% increase in tax dollars when considering only the levies in the public notice. Is there a motion to adopt this resolution as submitted and set the public hearing 
for March 4th of 2021. Henrik, so moved. Second, please. Second, Brackett. We have a motion by Councilman Gindrich with a second by Councilman Brackett. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Councilman Hopkins, how do you vote? Aye. Councilman Fralick? Aye. Councilman Gindrich? Aye. Councilman Gordon? Aye. Councilwoman Brockert? Aye. Councilman Malcolm? Aye. Councilman Brackett? Aye. Resolution is adopted with all ayes. And we will move to 11N. The water resource, water and resource recovery facility staff have received four proposals for the installation of the Papoose Lift Station Sluice Gate. By process of scoring for multiple parameters, Miller Trucking and Excavating received the highest score from a responsible bidder for securing this work in the amount of $37,000. The gate was purchased by the city separately for $13,200 in December of 2019. It did not arrive in time for installation during low flows in 2020. Is there a motion to approve this request as submitted? So move, Gordon. We have a motion by Councilman Gordon with a second by Councilman Brackett. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Councilman Hopkins, how do you vote? Aye. Councilman Fralick. Aye. Councilman Gendrich. Aye. Councilman Gordon. Aye. Councilman Brockert. Aye. Councilman Malcolm. Aye. Councilman Brackett. Aye. This request is approved with all ayes. And we'll move to 11 0. The city of Fruitland has contracted police services from the city of Muscatine for several years. The contract will expire on June 30th of this year, 2021. On Tuesday, February 9th of 2021, the Fruitland City Council voted and approved renewal of the contract to continue police services with the Muscatine Police Department. Is there a motion to approve this request as submitted? So no move, Hopkins. Hopkins. We have a motion by Councilman Hopkins with a second by Councilman Fraley. Is there any discussion? Just one question, Your Honor. Please continue. Um, are we continuing at the same rate as we have in the past? I believe we are. Brad, yeah. I thought I saw you on here. Yeah, Please. it actually. It, it, it actually goes up every time there's a raise. So it goes up every year, the cost does. Okay. But that's the only change. Okay. It's built in, it's built in, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Okay. Hearing nothing else, Councilman Hopkins, how do you vote? Aye. Councilman Freilich? Aye. Councilman Gindrich? Aye. Councilman Gordon? Aye. Councilman Brockert? Aye. Councilman Malcolm? Aye. Councilman Brackett? Aye. The request is approved with all ayes. And next we have three purchase order requests. <clears throat> the first one presented for City Council's consideration is to approve the issuance of the purchase order in the amount of $50,420 to Stu Hansen Dodge for the purchase of two 2021 Dodge Ram pickup trucks. One truck will be for the public housing agency and the second one is for collection and drainage. There's $24,000 budgeted for the housing truck. <clears throat> additional funding is available in the Sunset Park operating budget to cover the purchase. There's $27,000 budgeted in collection and drainage for this purchase. Do I have a motion to approve the request as submitted? So moved, Your Honor, Council oh. Brackett. Second, second Gordon. Please. We have a motion by Councilman Brackett with a second by Councilman Gordon. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Councilman Hopkins, how do you vote? Aye. Councilman Fralick. 
Aye. Councilman Gendrich. Aye. Councilwoman Gordon. <clears throat> Aye. Councilwoman Brocker. Aye. Councilman Malcolm. Aye. Councilman Packard. Aye. The request is approved with all ayes. And the second purchase order request is for the amount of $9,600 $9, to Elliott Equipment Company of Davenport for the purchase of six two-yard dumpsters, three three-yard dumpsters, and three four-yard dumpsters. So I have a motion to approve the request as submitted. So I'll move, Robert. Gordon. We have a motion by Councilman Gordon with a second by Councilman Brockard. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Councilman Hopkins, how do you vote? Aye. Councilman Fraley. Aye. Councilman Gendrich. Aye. Councilman Gordon. Aye. Councilman Brocker. Aye. Councilman Malcolm. Aye. Councilman Brackett. Aye. The request is approved with all ayes. <clears throat> and we'll move to our third purchase order request. Staff requests the approval of a purchase order in the amount of $234,750 to Elliott Equipment Company of Davenport for the purchase of a 2021 Freightliner cab and chassis with a new way Sidewinder refuse body. There's $260,000 budgeted for the purchase of this truck chassis and packer body in the refuse collections capital budget. Is there a motion to approve the request as submitted? So move, Brockert. Yeah. Second, Brockert. Second. We have a motion by Councilwoman Brockert with the second by Councilman Brackett. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Councilman Hopkins, how do you vote? Aye. Councilman Fraley. Aye. Councilman Gendrich. Aye. Councilwoman Gordon. Aye. Councilwoman Brocker. Aye. Councilman Malcolm. Aye. Councilman Brackett. Aye. The request is approved with all ayes. And thank you, Councilman Brackett, for bringing it to my attention that I neglected to ask for public comment. Is there anyone here tonight that would like to speak to Council about something not on tonight's budget or on tonight's agenda, not budget? Budget, I've had enough budgets, you're right. <laughs> I do not see anything in the chat and I do not hear anything. So we'll continue on with comments from Council members. Councilman Freilich, do you have anything tonight? Nothing tonight, Your Honor. Councilwoman Gordon. Uh, yes, Mayor, I do have a question or recommendation for Council, if I may. Yes. Okay, um, we've had a really successful run at um, meeting in chambers, sort of in a hybrid when we did the budgets. And I would request that we consider moving to a partial in chamber and our residents uh, watching us online or participating online in late March, if we could target that uh, to move back to chambers. Uh, our city administrator had asked us to wait at least until uh, the end of March to begin looking at that. So um, I would I would ask Carol, does that fit with what you're yeah. asking? I think probably the first meeting in April would be the the best day to get clear of some of the the public hearings and things on the the um, development agreements. Okay. Uh, especially delaying one, but I I think the first meeting in April, and we have left the chamber the chamber's configuration the same as we did in budget, so it would accommodate some spacing at the table too. So. Okay. So I guess I would ask for. Uh, for council to uh, maybe, let's see, next week we'll, we won't have a meeting, uh, but the first week of March, why don't we revisit? Why don't, now that this is out there, why don't we have staff or council think about it? And uh, if you could bring it up again at the next uh, meeting, uh, Peggy, or I'm sorry, Councilwoman Gordon, uh, giving everybody a chance to ponder their comfort level between now and then, does that work for you? 
Excellent. Yes. Thank you, Mayor. I appreciate that. Certainly. Is there anything else? That's it. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Councilman Hopkins, do you have anything tonight? Nothing tonight, ma'am. Thank you. Councilman Jindrich. Nothing. Thank you. Councilman Brocker. Uh, I have heard from a, a developer and a business owner in the south end of Muscatine this week since our presentation and uh, Councilwoman Gordon and I have also been asked to go before the board of Rebuilding Together Muscatine. So I am looking forward to moving our project forward. Thank you. I'd like to insert, I was going to do it later, but I might as well do it now. I'd, I'd like to thank um, both you and Councilman Gordon and, and the other presenters for uh, the excellent meeting that we had um, for Riverbend Neighbors earlier in the week. It was very informative and we look forward to, to more fruitful dialogue as we continue. Thank you. Councilman Malcolm. Nothing tonight, Your Honor. Thank you. Councilman Brackett. Nothing tonight, Your Honor. Thank you. Cinda, anything? And Carol, City Administrator Webb. Anything Nothing tonight? No, nope, we're good. Thank you. All right. At this time, Council will leave this meeting for business in two other meetings, one a closed session and one an exempt session. We will come back to this meeting when those are concluded to adjourn for the evening. No additional action is expected at that time, but you are welcome to stay on this call if you wish. I have a request to enter closed session pursuant to Iowa Code Section 21.5.1i to evaluate the professional competency of an individual whose appointment, hiring, performance, or discharge is being considered when necessary to prevent needless and irreparable injury to that person's reputation, and that individual requests a closed session. Do I have a motion to enter closed session? So move, Gordon. Gordon. We have a motion by Councilman Gordon, with the second by Councilman Brackett. Councilman Hopkins, how do you vote? Aye. Councilman Fralick. Aye. Councilman Jindrich. Aye. Councilman Gordon. Aye. Councilman Brocker. Aye. Councilman Malcolm. Aye. And Councilman Brackett. Aye. Council, please exit this call and go to the other one. <laughs>